knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. ninjas we're not gonna attack you it's okay if you want to debate with somebody be civil okay but uh other than that we're all gonna have a really good time today make some noise Woo! come on guys i can't hear you make some noise Hell yeah! but before we start i just want to make it clear that um this rally that you've attended today is not a patriot prayer rally okay it's a him to rally. Yeah. And this, like I said, why the reason why we're here today is bigger than Trump, bigger than anything. You know, it goes beyond, you know, politics. This, the reason why we're here today is we're here to stand up for those that have been falsely accused. You know? And that's why we're out here today. That's why I, I, I say, even if you're a lefty, if you're a right, you know, come in here if you agree that the truth comes first before we look at the victim or the accused. Because there's, like I said to the media today that that, uh, that that did an interview with me, there's three kind of truth. There is your truth, there is my truth, and there is the truth. And the truth is the reason why we're here today. The truth is the reason why we're taking a stand. I just saw on the media, and even that guy right there who has a sign about Avenatti or whoever his name is, the horse whisperer, uh, that guy right there, you know, I I disagree with that guy, but I say we we take it through the process. He's innocent until he's proven guilty. I know this is karma, because he's the one that that pushed the whole believe all women, and now it's turning around and biting and it's biting him in the ass right now. So, but I still say we do what's right. We're better than this. Let's not push any fake evidence or whatever. But let's see what happens. Let's see if it's the truth or is it just his truth that he's trying to push. But anyways, let's have a good time today. And remember, we got to march in Vancouver, Washington after this. We're not going to march in Portland. You're going to say, oh, you guys came here and caused a riot. Hell no. There's already a riot right there. Where's your damn mayor to go control the damn riot right there? Uh, give me some music, Joey Gibson. All right, right now, guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this rally. Um, some of our main speakers are stuck in traffic right now, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, the party will still go on uh, if Joey decides to play something that will make me cry up here. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Joey Gibson. Our speaker that's coming out today, our first speaker is none other than the organizer of this rally. She weighs... 125 pounds. Yay. She's the heavyweight champion, Yay. the undefeated, the undisputed, the one and only, the founder of the Him Too movement, Haley Anna. Yeah. 
Sorry guys, I messed up already. <laughs> Thank you guys for all coming out here. Okay, thank you guys for all coming out here today. I'm glad each and every single one of you came out. I wanted to thank all of the locals as well who have the courage to be out here and the ones who flew out to be out here. There's a few that are gonna be coming in. They're stuck in traffic right now, but I want I wrote a speech. <laughs> I started the Him Too movement because I wanted to give a voice to men who have been wrongfully accused. When I say wrongfully accused, I mean anything. Men are, men are under attack in the U.S. I have received lots of questions. Why I'm being sexist? Him Too isn't just for men, it's for everyone. Him Too moment is to give these men a voice to tell their story as well. <sighs> everyone deserves a voice. I'm not against the Me Too movement, but it's very clear to me to see Me Too is only focused on women. But I will add, Me Too movement has shown children to be quiet and not to come out right away if something inappropriate happens. Him Too encourages men and women to come out right away if something tragically happens. So you're not waiting 30 years or 32 more years down the road. Or <laughs> Over the last couple months, uh, over the last month and a half, just getting this event together has been overwhelming. For each and every single one of us, just for giving men a platform to speak on. Every time women say they want equality, men are getting pushed aside. They can't have an opinion, they can't speak up. I see it, I'm on Twitter getting death threats and cops, FBI are getting involved and we will be taking legal actions towards those kind of people who support the Me Too movement. And I just, wanted, I just wanted to give this platform to males to speak on, and there's a lot of women who support this movement as well. Moms, grandmas, uh, that reached out to me. I've had many stories. Uh, I've heard many stories, and it is sad. It's sad that today in society, men have to be careful. The, you, they're these nasty women, feminists that are out here that take their shirts off, showing their boobs, screaming at these innocent men walking past, calling them rapists to uh, show, show a statement, that's sexual assault. But here we are, what, the little crowd that we have right now, we're looked at as bad guys for giving male, male platform. And, oh, sorry guys, it's just, I'm so nervous right now. And I wanted to say this, men or women are different, we have different roles. We were meant to create a modern family, and I refuse to apologize. And today, I cannot wait for you to hear all these speakers. There's even victims up here that are going to be speaking. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a great time. And I hope the media that is out here, you can show show these speakers. Let, let them be heard. Because all we're hearing is one side, not the other. So I thank you guys for coming out here. That's just what I want to say. And I'll be coming back on the mic more. So I don't know. I got nothing against the Me Too movement because it helped a lot of it, hey, it helped a lot of female come out and talk about you know and and you know and have the courage. It gave them the courage to come out and speak. So I got nothing against the Me Too movement. But the problem with the Me Too movement, it has been hijacked by higher up people, by politicians, and used as a weapon to smear other politicians. And that's the reason why we're out here. And I say, you know, God bless be everybody that that stands up for the Me Too. God bless you guys for, for bringing up the Me Too, you know, and giving the women's, you know, uh, and anybody that's been sexually harassed, you know, the courage to come out and speak. But the reason why we came out here, we came out here for the Him Too. Because it looks like every time a man comes out and say, I've been sexually harassed, I've been, somebody done this to, they, uh, to, to me, everybody laughs at him. Everybody mocks him, saying, well, you're a pussy. 
you, you, you're a big guy. Why aren't you? Why aren't you doing anything? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? No, man can be victims too. And I'm not saying I'm playing the victim card today, because I've never been touched by a woman or anything, you know. But <laughs> you better shut the hell up, Gibson. <laughs> Don't make me open up the book on your ass. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, we ought to, the, it all comes down to the truth. And that is all we're, we're here for. It's the truth. We're here to give man a, a, a voice. We're here to, to, to tell man it's okay to come out and tell the truth. It's okay to come out and stand up and defend yourself. Don't let anybody shut you down. That's why we're out here. That's why we're out here. But uh, I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm just here to MC the rally. But uh, this next speaker right here, this this mofo right here, he is one hell of a, dro a, a troll. Here we go. Yep, he's a troll, and I know I'm gonna roast his ass. Cause this, this dude right here, he will literally, if you're friends with him on Facebook, please unfriend him right away. <laughs> because he will literally kill your brain cells with his comments and everything. That's how powerful his troll is. But hey, give it up for my brother, Christopher Foster! All right, I'm a little nervous because I've never actually really have spoken in a forum like this. I just want to let you know that the uh, Me Too movement doesn't represent us men. They force victimhood on women and castrate men who speak out against them. Amen. Women want equality, while men want accountability. I am a victim, a victim of false accusations. A woman tried to destroy my life and my family due to her own choices. I am also a survivor of sexual assault and sexual abuse from when I was a child. I don't feel anyone in the Him Too movement is saying that women are not victims. I believe many of us feel that men are too, just maybe not on the same scale that women are. Men are constantly being overshadowed and told or made to feel that their experiences don't matter. That is unacceptable. We must speak out. We can no longer accept being dehumanized over our gender. People's lives are being ruined by the actions and even the accusations of sexual assault. Accountability is a must. With repercussions or for false accusations, we will wean out the false accusers so we can get back to taking the real victim serious. <clears throat> right now, the system has been made a mockery due to false accusations. Many states and even some federal legislators right now are working on legislation to bring to justice to those who commit false accusations of sexual assault, rape, and abuse. It's not right for anyone to falsely accuse another individual contact your legislatures and get get them on board. Let them know that we will no longer tolerate it. People need to take responsibility for their own actions and not jeopardize others' welfare and well-being. Join us today in the fight for equal protections for men and accountability for women. Thank you everyone for coming out today to support us. That was Christopher Foster, everybody. Give it up again for Christopher Foster! Come on, guys. You guys you guys sound like you guys are sleeping right now. Let's do a little bit of chant. Let's do a chant. Let's do a chant right now. Let's show Antifa and all these people that are standing against us that we know how to do a chant, too. Um, even though this is something I pulled out of my ass just uh, when I was standing back here. But let's do it. I'm going to need your participation on this. I say hashtag, you say him, too. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. I know you got bigger spirit than that. I say hashtag, you say him too. Hashtag, hashtag. I love you guys, I love you guys. Okay, this next speaker coming up, this is the president of the Patriot Prayer of Oregon. And it's none other than my brother, or uh, should I say my uncle, Jay Harris. Give it up for him. Well, I didn't write anything down because up until a couple hours ago, I didn't know I was going to be here. So, but I do want to say this in this, it's okay to be, it's okay to be, it's okay to be, it's okay to be male. Okay. Other than a couple of occasions here and there, how many of you guys actually chose to be male? That's what I want to know. Did anybody make that decision? I know I didn't get the memo when I was in my mom's womb. She said, Hey, do you want to be male or female? I got that chosen for me, and because of that, people like them want to demonize, and they want to, uh, what's the word, vilify,
because I'm a male with this toxic masculinity and crap like that. I'm going to put it on record because I know there's a bunch of cameras going on, but I am not an apologist for rapists. I Say it again. cannot stand anyone who commits the act of rape. Hell yeah. That is not what we're here for. Is there anybody in this crowd that thinks it's okay to rape somebody? Raise your hand so you can get the crap beat out of you. How about that? Amen to that. Woo. We are not rape apologists. When I was younger, I had a significant other that was pregnant. And I actually lost a child due to a violent rape. I do not apologize for rapists. But I also don't apologize for women who use rape accusations as tools. Because that shit happens for real. And every time they do that crap, it diminishes the weight of the story that that actual victim has. Every one of these men that I know in this audience will go to bat for a woman who's had something like that happen to her. We ain't apologizing for anybody who commits an act like that. That's not what we're doing. But just because we're male does not mean that bad stuff can't happen to us too. And when women destroy people's lives for a game, that's what it is, it's a game. It's a game to them. Every man who's been through it and every woman who's been through it knows it's not really a game. So this Him Too movement, it counts. They're over there protesting us. Why? Because it's us. They don't give two craps about what we're talking about. They're not listening. They won't listen. They don't want to listen. But hopefully with all these cameras going in the press here, somebody listens that it matters to. Because this is a serious deal. We're not doing this just to have another rally to antagonize them. This is a serious issue that people need to pay attention to, just as much as actual victims. Not rather than, not instead of, but alongside. So I'm gonna say it okay one more time. It's okay to be male, and it's okay to be pissed off if somebody tries to ruin your life because you're a male. And I hope you women stand beside. And you know what? I think it happens to women too. I think it happens to women too, so don't let me be misogynist. I'm not saying just men. If it happens to women too, speak up, stand something. Stand for something. Stand up and say. There's things happening on the other side of that token too. At the very same time, we stand up for victims of rape. Yeah. Give it up for Jay Harris. Hey guys, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try to uh, 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 add something to what he was saying. You know, like um, falsely accused thing. You know, you know, being falsely accused is not fun. It's nothing fun about it. I swear to God, I hope to God that I don't ever. That's why I thank God for the for the, for the him too movement. I hope to God I don't ever get falsely accused. But. It's not a new thing. It's a really old issue. Where's all my Christians in the house? There you go. And if you read the Bible, I know brother uh, uh, Quentin Ray, who was that that got uh, accused, falsely accused by uh, Body Fars? Uh, uh, Joseph. Brother Joseph. If you guys read that story, the wife of the king tried to sleep with him, tried to, the, the, the forced herself on him. And he was like, no. You're the, you're the wife of my king. You're the queen of this, of this kingdom. I'm not gonna do this. And you know what she did? She turned around and she starts scratching herself. She started ripping her clothes. Then she went and cried to the king and said, I've been raped. So this, this whole falsely accused thing, it goes way, way back. And we ought to stand up and say no more to it. We ought to stand up and say, no, we have a voice too. Even though we're, we're men, we can be victims too. And we're not going to take it anymore. It's time for us to take a stand. Start standing up. Even if you're female and you're here at this rally and you have a son, speak out to protect your child. Speak out so your child do not grow up in a society that puts accusation before the truth. That is why we're out here. It's for the truth. Amen? Amen. Our next speaker coming up is none other. I know you guys are a little bit sick and tired of seeing his face all the time. 
Uh, it's a guy that claims to be Japanese, but he's actually Mexican that came in illegally in our country. And now he's standing up, he got tired of all the illegal immigration and felt bad for what he's trying to do or for what he did before. It's none other than our Latino brother, Joey Gibson. I'm actually not Mexican, but I have no problem with being Mexican. It's cool. Hey, the first thing I want to say is uh, what I've been really hoping for this whole time in the last two years is get other people to begin to stand up and throw their own stuff. So I want to give a huge, if we can give a huge round of applause to Haley Adams for organizing this. Oh, it's starting to get hot. So um, here's what I want to talk about. The thing that I think about, you know, when Haley asked or she brought up about doing this event, I started thinking about him too and what it is. One of the things I think about is equality. That's something that we need in this country more than anything. And the people who run around and scream equality all the time are the ones who are the most racist, the most sexist. Those are the ones who are going to treat you differently based off of whether you're a man, you're a woman, you're gay, you're straight, you're black, you're white, you're brown. I'm here to say we go, we go back to, to what Martin Luther King Jr. used to preach. When he talked about what matters, what's on the inside, your actual actions, what you do, actual evidence, not the color of your skin. You don't judge people because it's a man or a woman. You don't say that him too is inherently sexist. That's not right because what we want to say is we believe everybody's equal and everybody has an equal opportunity, right? You have to go through the process. You have to judge each person based off their actions. If somebody comes out, whether it's a man or a woman, and claims that they were raped or he or she or whatever, we don't care if it's a man, we don't care if it's a woman, we look into the actual allegations, to the actions, to the evidence. Can I get an amen? See, this is the thing. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I've been preaching, Tiny and, and some other people from the very beginning. It's real tolerance. It's actually accepting people and not judging them. Stop putting people in groups and things that they can't control. I can't control the fact that I'm a man, okay? I can't, he can't control the fact that he's black or whatever it may be. So let's stop focusing on those things and begin to look on what's on the inside, okay? Can I get an amen? Here's, you're always gonna be short, man. You're gonna get shorter, actually, and your ears will get bigger. That's what happens. It's a proven fact, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about, I'm gonna finish off with this, and I need to be, start saying this more often. Okay, I haven't been doing enough, but when you think about, you think about the state of mind of someone, whether you're a man or a woman, your state of mind to where you're so, you're in such a bad place, you're in such a dark place, to the point where you're willing to destroy someone else's life for whatever your motivation may be. You're willing to destroy them, to take them down, to lie about them, and to potentially even put them in jail for however long, all over life. Think about how miserable of a person you must be. I'm not looking down on that person, I'm saying inside you, you would just be miserable. You'd be filled with so much hatred and so much anger. And that's what I believe in our country right now, why we're so divisive, why there's so much hatred, is because we have so many individuals who are in their own little dark life that they're living. And that's what we need. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna finish up with this, and I, I do believe that if we as a country begin to be more spiritual, we begin to look up in the sky, we begin to look to God. We begin to ask Jesus, because I'm telling you, Jesus is, is the guy that can take all your pain, all your suffering, all your darkness, all of it, and he can take that and turn it into light so that you can help out other people who've been in similar situations. Can I get an amen? I don't care what you believe in, who you are, whatever. I don't judge you. That's one quality that I have. Sometimes people wish I would judge a little more, okay? I don't judge you. I don't care what you guys want to do. But I'm telling you, if you begin to look to things beyond what you can see, beyond what you can feel, beyond what you know, because I'm telling you, there's way more. Look, at, we're on this tiny little rock flying around at what? I don't know, thousands of miles an hour, constantly spinning, going around the sun. Just all these things happen perfectly. We're out in the middle of nowhere in space. And you're telling me there's not a God. I'm here to say, I know there is a God, and I do believe in Jesus Christ, and I do believe that is the answer, especially in Portland. we got to bring God back into Portland, all right? Again, I want to give a big, huge, giant thank you to Haley Adams. And I'm telling you guys, we need more people to be organizing rallies. Um, I'm going to be going, we'll be going to Vancouver later tonight. We'll be marching on the new waterfront. Have you guys seen the new waterfront, Vancouver? We haven't broken it in yet, so we're going to go out there and we're going to have a march. Guys, thank you so much for coming out here today. You have a good day. Gracias, amigo. <laughs> All right, our next speaker coming up. Uh, um, this person that's been showing up to our rallies, you know, uh, since the beginning. Well, 
halfway to uh, we, we uh, halfway uh, to uh, Patriot Parent, this person uh, showed up and started standing with us. And uh, even though this person started standing with us, we were still called, you know, homophobics and everything. Our next speaker, I'm gonna show you right now, is one of my good friends too. Edie Dixon, are you here? Right here, give it up for Edie! Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Hey everyone, my name is Edie Dixon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, people know me on the internet as Edie the Transservative Dixon. Um, so today I'm representing my biological gender. So can I get a hands up for him too? So um, one of the things I like to do is uh, call out the gay agenda and other progressive movements that like to target the brave masculine man. Because we all know there's a political war against men, as well as an ideological war and a psychological war. But there's also a biological war as well. Natural and biological male behaviors are now being demonized and labeled as toxic masculinity. When we all know you're either an asshole or you're not. Am I right? But from the time we are born, we're introduced to estrogenic chemicals. Have it be in our foods, the food packaging, or the hormones in our water, but it messes with the androgen to estrogen ratio. And that ratio is what determines the masculinization or the feminization of a man. The reason this is important is because of why it is being done. First, you have to look at what masculinity is. Masculinity is a spectrum measured by bravery. And I'll show you how. With the Revolutionary War, the total American population was just 2.8 million people. But the bravery of just 260,000 men who fought against over 400,000 British soldiers freed every man, woman, and child living free in America today. With the Civil War, the total American population was 31 million people, but the bravery of just 2.6 million men freed three million slaves, also freeing every black man, woman, and child living free in America today. With World War I, America's total population was around 95 to 100 million people. Out of that, the bravery of just four million men are responsible in weakening Europe's global superpower, replacing it with the United States of America. World War II, the total population of America was 138 million people, but the help of the bravery of just 16 million men brought about such a considerable amount of change in global politics that it changed the course of history to biblical proportions. Today, America's population has risen to 325.7 million people. Now do you understand why there's a war on men, masculinity, and bravery? They demonize any profession where masculinity and bravery is needed. Being in the military or being a police officer was once respectable in our society. But now, our society hunts them. Men who are once confident providers are now suffering with low self-esteem and committing suicide because men naturally crave to be the leader of the home, to be strong enough to protect and to provide. And without this, it creates a void. And that void is a main contributor for the fact that the number one killer for men under 50 is suicide. Men are, treated so poor, men are treated so poorly in our society that three times more vets die of suicide than they do on the battlefield. Men are treated so poorly in family and custody courts that following a divorce, men commit suicide 10 times that of women. But can men ask society for help? No, because as a society, we have a false sense that men have it good, that men are toxic. 
But what we know is that masculinity protects us. Masculinity keeps us free. Masculinity doesn't just fight for freedom. Masculinity risks dying for it. Destroying everything that matters to a man is the only way the deep state can truly enslave us. Men will be less likely to fight back if you take away his family. So they pushed feminist movements to attack and destroy the traditional family unit. Men will be less likely to fight for their countries if they're stripped of their national and racial identities. So they made anything dealing with national or racial pride racist and offensive. Everything men once were risking their lives to protect, they don't have. A man's family and friends are now secluded to his Facebook. His love and relationships are now free unlimited porn. And his night out is now replaced with free internet videos, music, and video games. American bravery has shown to be the greatest in the world. And those who don't want us to be free, that terrifies them. So I'll end with a word of advice. Love God, do no harm, and take no shit, because we're conservatives. Thank you. God bless Edie, give it up for Edie! Hey, turn it down, Joey, a little bit. It's a little bit funny. I want to tell you guys this story before I do something else that we always do at rallies. Edie over here, his name is spelled E-D-I-E. -E. So Edie, when he, what, 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 well, she said uh, she's gonna represent her biological, so I, I, I'll just, he went with us to Berkeley. And the whole time, I haven't talked to Eddie, to Eddie, I've been calling him Eddie everywhere, and he never corrected me. He, I was like, Eddie, right here. And he's like, what? He never corrected me. And finally, when she pumped chest with this other dude trying to beat her up, he was like, what do you want? I'm like, oh, damn. And I was like, Eddie, Eddie, it was like, it's Eddie. I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. See, that's the good thing about transgender on our side. They don't give a damn about pronouns and all that. They're open-minded. They don't expect people to bow down to their pronouns and everything. They don't care. But it's their choice that they want to be what they are. And I thank God for Eddie every single time that she comes out and I'll show her respect all the time. Because I've always said, hey, I'm not for the LGBT nor against it. You do whatever the hell you want to do. Just don't try to force me to respect that BS. Okay? Don't try to get don't try to hate on me for not saying your correct pronoun. Cause I don't give a damn. But uh this is uh one of our tradition we're gonna do today. Cause when I said I, I love having fun, I do love having fun at rallies. So I, I, I ask everybody please clear the middle and if you know this dance, join the big time.
Hey guys, let's pull over here and let them do their job, please. If you're a media, you do whatever you want to do, record them, whatever.
<laughs> be nice, right? See, it's the difference. They don't know how to have fun like us. a burger in my mouth. I don't even go to the gym. I just walk past the gym and smack it. I've already hit the gym. This is the Portland Police Bureau. Yeah, bro, Do not damage the orange sensing. Persons who damage the fence may be subject to arrest or citation. Believe me, it will work. Yes, and I did kick the soy inside. Oh my goodness. But uh, I'm gonna introduce this next speaker and then I'll take a little break. Oh, Jesus. I'm sweating. Our next On my list, I know most of you guys will know him. This guy came all the way from Arkansas. And I think you guys are, uh, you guys know, he does the, the, the late night rant on his Facebook. Follow him too. He's, he's a really solid brother. He's the number one rebel I've ever seen. And he walks around with the pig. I don't know if he brought his pig today, but I love that brother. <laughs> Give it up for brother Billy Session! Well, guys, I didn't prepare a speech. I don't write speeches. Uh, you know, I gripe every night. Y'all hear me? So, like I said, I'll make this short and sweet. I traveled 2,500 miles from Arkansas to come here to Portland, Oregon to help expose some of this corruption that's going on with these fraudulent Democrat women coming forth against our appointees and our politicians that's, that's contributing to ruining this country. But there's also a lot more going on too, guys. I mean, that's just part of the Democrat cabal that's coming forward with these fraudulent women. It's an attack on conservatism. The Democrats is totally not happy that uh, Trump's in the White House. Their champion got beat in 2016 and they're, and they're not gonna give up anytime soon. So we gotta pull our ball game together and just come together as one, as, as conservative patriots in this country. Put our differences to the side and unify as one. Uh, malicious, 3%, Proud Boys, Highwaymen, you name it. They all need to come together and operate as one. You know, um, I was asked to come here to talk about, you know, fraudulent claims being made on Kavanaugh and others, just like they did Judge Roy Moore. And, you know, and, and after the election was over with, they found out, well, you know, the claims made against Judge Roy Moore was fraudulent. But look what it costed him. It costed him the ticket. After, after it's over with and the damage is done, you can't go back. The damage is already done, guys. They don't care if they get... Um, called out for being fraudulent. The damage is already done. So they're going to continue to come and do this kind of thing. And, and, and the thing about it is, the, the real legitimate women that has been sexually assaulted, they're going to be scared to come forward to say anything now because of all these fraudulent women coming out. You know? I mean, think about it. I mean, if you're a woman and you were actually sexually assaulted, would you want to come out after all these women in the news has been made out to be fraudulent for taking Democrat and Soros' money and everybody's looking at you the same as everybody's looking at them? I mean, think about that, guys. Would you want to do that? So this hashtag him too is a double-edged sword that they're doing over there. They're weaponizing it. They're making it. Me too. All right, y'all got too many twos here, all right, damn it. I'm working so. All right? The Me Too. Him too. Okay, well, that's already all it was. All right. But they're weaponizing it, just like the other speakers have said. And they're discrediting legitimate women. But they don't care. They're supposed to be the champion for women's rights as they're tearing women's rights apart the whole time. 
I mean, think about it. You ain't got to be a rock scientist to figure that out. Even he'll be marks on them, that shit. So like I said, guys, there's a lot of things going on in this country. I mean, honestly, we're going to have a bunch of, uh, well, new Democrats coming up running for president. The Democrats won the House of Representatives, as y'all know. We've had a lot of election fraud down there in Florida. Big stink stirred up over that. Ray Counts, the Georgia governor race is another. This country is, is, is divided more than I've ever seen it in my 42 years on this earth. I never thought I'd ever see it like this. People divided, right and left. It's not north and south, east and west, it's right and left. And we gotta come together as Americans and find, find common ground. This is our country, we all live here. Every, each and every one of us has got a birth certificate we're citizens, guys. Okay? We all pay the same taxes. We all work the same shitty jobs. Okay? We all drive the same old busted ass vehicles. There ain't none of us any better than the other. But if we lose our country to this petty crap, what do we got left? Our country's the only thing we got, guys. And once it's gone, we ain't got nothing. We've got to do what it takes to save this country. Because trust me, if you're a historian and you've researched history, you do not want another 1861. You do not want five years of war and reconstruction trying to bring a nation back together. A lot of hard feelings. A lot of hard feelings even to this day, 155 years ago by some people. You know, we got to learn from our past. But if we continue on the road that we're going on, we're looking at such disaster coming. And that's the reason I come out here and do what I do. That's the reason Tiny and the rest of these guys do what they do. is because we're all about freedom. We don't want socialism to take over. We don't like communism. We're all about freedom, guys. We're all about preserving our way of life as Americans. That's what it's about. And that's the reason I travel 2,500 miles up here to do this. Trust me, I got other things to do. But if the country comes first, and if you love your country, you will stand up for it. You will not make excuses. You will put that fishing trip, that hunting trip off, and you say, my country needs me here today. I'm going to start being a better American because this country is where I live, where I work, where I raise my children, and where I'm going to raise my grandchildren. And what I do today has a big effect on how life they've got tomorrow. Amen. God bless everybody out there. Give it up again for my redneck brother from another white mother, Billy Session. Uh, the ne uh, this next speaker coming up today, uh, I just met her today, and I was told that she's a veteran. Thank you for your service. Everybody give it up for Sister Rebecca! Good afternoon, beautiful people of God. Thank you for having me here today. As he said that, I am a veteran. I am a disabled vet. I just got out of the military a little less than a year ago. Um, I am also a pastor, and I am a health coach and life coach, and I serve vets all over the country. But I'm here today because the world sees society as, as there's no greater power than you, Father God, that we just want to take it and we just want to pour it out into the world. We want to pour it out to our brothers and sisters. We want it to rain down on us, Lord. Fill the... to go. He gets a call the next day from... He gets a call the next day from a super... He gets a call the next day from a super...